Hello there. So this week I want to continue our series on planning a Walt Disney World vacation. The first thing that you need to look at when you are planning a Walt Disney World vacation is your budget. How much to budget for a Walt Disney World vacation. I have note cards this week so excuse me as I um, consult them um, frequently. So there are two, trips are usually driven by one of two factors. Um, your budget, so how much can you afford, and <clears throat> the time of year that you can go. So your available dates. So let's look at dates first, and this is going to be very number heavy, and I will put in some um, graphics to help you follow along here in just a minute. But let's look at dates first. So a few years back, Disney introduced a date-based tickets. So the cost of the ticket would fluctuate based on the season and like the day of the week or the date that um, you went. For, so for research purposes, we are going to look at the cost of a base ticket. So you can visit one park per day on different days and in different seasons. So generally, the more days of a ticket, the less the overall price. So for instance, if you just rolled up to the Magic Kingdom and you were like, I need a one day ticket, that is going to cost more than say if you planned ahead and you're like, I need a five day ticket. Overall, you're, they're, they're going to give you that discount for booking that third day, fourth day, fifth day. So it's going to decrease overall. Does that make sense? Like one day ticket might be $136. Um, but if you do a five day ticket, it would be like 136 for the first day and the second day and then the third day would only be say 120 and then a fourth day it would only be you know 110 and then the fifth day would be like 90. So they give you that discount for booking multiple days. So let's continue here. So a five day adult ticket beginning um, the beginning of May is a $516.31 with the individual days varying between $102 and $105. Same ticket, but let's look at July. Interestingly, that is decreased to $497.71 with individual days starting as low as $99. Now your lowest cost ticket is going to happen in September. And those are start at $92. So a five day ticket prices out at $468.37. By contrast, your most expensive days are going to be right there around um, Christmas Day, New Year's. So the most expensive five-day ticket starts on the 21st of December with individual days varying between $120 to $122. And the five days of tickets during this time frame will run you $595.88. One caveat that I want to throw in here is when I ran these numbers, I ran them yesterday um what is today so february i don't remember what day we're on 17th so today february 18th disney came out and increased ticket prices so this kind of gives you a ballpark figure um but just know ticket prices increased and they will increase again probably in june so do keep that in mind but what this tells you overall is that your lowest ticket is going to come in September, your most expensive ticket is going to be in December. So if you're going around those holidays, just know that you're going to be paying more um, than you are, say, when those kids are first back in school. The larger component of your Disney vacation is actually not going to be your ticket cost, it's going to be your hotel cost. And the hotel prices um, are done the same way as tickets. So it's based on the season and how full the hotel is. So granted your, your Christmas season is automatically going to be more expensive than say that September season, but also the closer that we get and the more full that hotel gets, the more that hotel room is going to cost. So for instance, I priced out a um, vacation for a friend. Um, she wants to go in October, and I priced it out maybe a month or so ago, rooms at Pop Century were running $200. Well, I went to Booker today and those rooms have jumped to $230 for the same dates. So just know that the more full that hotel gets, they're going to move those prices up and up, okay? But let's look at an average price for a standard room 
at each of the various categories. So remember, Disney has multiple hotel categories and within each of those hotels there are room categories. So you can have like a, for instance, a standard room, a preferred um, room, a pool view, um, a theme park view, um, a two bedroom suite, a family suite. So all of those things come into play. So we're just going to look at a standard room and just kind of the average cost for each season in each of the three categories. So there are multiple hotels within the value category. There are multiple hotels in the moderate category. There are multiple hotels in the deluxe category. So I'm just going to kind of take the average of uh, the cost of those, okay? So if you're looking at May, the average for a standard room is going to, in a value, in the value category is going to run between $163 to $202. A moderate is going to run between $266 to $342, and a deluxe is going to run $495 to a little over $1,000. We I priced that out for May 2022, so keep in mind that um, we're kind of close to May, so those numbers may be inflated just a little, as opposed to if you had booked these rooms as soon as you could. Um, you can book a hotel room 500 days out. You cannot book your tickets 500 days out, but I'll get to that later. So let's move on to July and look at the cost of the hotel rooms in July. A value resort in July is going to run you between $176 and $215. A moderate is going to run between $259 and $307. And a deluxe is going to run $457 to $879. This is where I, I find things interesting. Remember on our tickets, September was the lowest cost. But let's look at hotels. So in the value category, that still holds true. $160 to $202. In our moderate category, it does not hold true. Those hotel rooms are a little bit more expensive. $275 to $309. Um, and again, in our deluxe though, it does go back to being less expensive. $430 to $988. Your prices for December, you are going to see a huge jump in these prices. So your value category hotels are going to average between $226 to $297. Your moderates are going to run between $360 to $389. And your deluxe category hotels are going to run from $684 to $1,098. So when it comes to hotels, you can also choose a non-Disney owned hotel, but keep in mind that you're going to have to pay that $25 per day parking fee at the theme parks. Um, if you are an annual pass holder, that fee is waived. So if we condense this down into a package, say for two adults, one child age 11, so therefore a Disney adult, and one child age 8, just keep in mind that Disney considers children 10 and up an adult and children 2 and under are free. So let's look at, at what a total package hotel and tickets would cost for this family. So let's send them to Disney World in May. They want to stay at a value hotel. It's going to come out to $3,462.71. A moderate hotel will run them $4,380.71. And a deluxe hotel in May will run $6,260.59. A little bit of a difference there. Um, in July you're going to see just a slight increase of $3,521.21. A moderate hotel will run you $3,818.21. And a deluxe hotel will run $6,479.95. Now let's look at that value season of September. You can stay at a value hotel then for $3,312. A moderate is going to run you $3,894.79 and a deluxe will price out at $5,451.79. Now you want to go all out, you want to have that really special Christmas so you're going to spend it at Disney with the family, that's going to cost you. A value will be $4,494.92. Your moderate is going to come in at $5,024.80, and then your deluxe hotel is going to top out at $7,495.30. And these are just kind of the average prices. If you want that December trip, you need to book early. 
So these numbers reflect the hotel and ticket component, but there are additional components to consider such as transportation and your food budget. Transportation is wildly varied based on where you are traveling from and the type of transportation involved. There are a couple of known factors. So if you are flying in, you are going to have to have transportation from MCO or Orlando International um, to Disney. So you can book an Uber, you can schedule a car service. Mears Connect offers a shuttle service as does Sunshine Flyers. And now you can book through Disney directly. Let's look at just a couple of those costs. On my last trip, I booked a Lyft and it was a tight squeeze for two of us and our luggage. So just keep in mind, that was for two adults. Each of us had one bag each. And it was $48.37. That was for like a, a standard Uber. So if you, if you have a family, you're gonna be looking at doing an Uber XL, something like that, so it's gonna cost more. So it was $48.37 one way from the airport to my hotel. The pricing for, let's look at the two shuttle services, Mirrors and Sunshine Flyers. So let's look at the round trip prices. For Mirrors, it's $32. Round trip for an adult, for a child, it's $27. For Sunshine Flyers, and the cool thing about Sunshine Flyers is they have wrapped their buses, their shuttles, to look like an old-fashioned um, rail car. So kind of a fun little deal. It is a little bit more expensive for the adults, $34 round trip, but you save that on the children's ticket, $25 round trip there. If you have a car, keep in mind, so you're driving in, Disney charges for parking at their resort hotels, and that varies based on the hotel. So it can be anywhere from $15 a night up to $25 a night based on the hotel. Now, if once you're on Disney property, Disney provides bus service um, or monorail service, ferry boat service from your hotel to the theme parks for free. So that is all included. If you drive and you want to take your own car from the hotel to the theme park, um, your parking at the theme park is also free with your hotel stay. So let's move on and look at food because food can add up very quickly at Disney. You definitely want to look at your food budget, plan ahead on that. Um, your counter service meals run $15 on average for adults and $11 for kids. Snacks such as a Mickey ice cream bar, Dole Whips, Mickey pretzels, all of that are going to run between $6 and $11. And then a character meal, which is usually the most expensive of table service meals, is going to run about $50 for an adult and $35 for a kid. So let's take our family of four from above, and a day of food of Disney is going to run about $374. Now that's if you do a counter service breakfast, a counter service lunch, a snack, um, a table service dinner, and a late night snack. So first of all, that's a lot of food. Um, and secondly, $374 times their, what did we do, a five day trip? I mean, that's over, what are you looking at there? 15, 16, 15, $1,800 just in food. That's enough to make you kind of want to choke. So how can we how can we fix that? So there are ways to save. Um, you can order groceries, have them delivered um, to Bell Services, pick them up from Bell Services. This way you can have um, breakfast in your room. You know, breakfast bars are great. Um, you can order cereal and then just run down in the morning or the night before and pick up a small deal of milk. Um, to have with that cereal. There are refrigerators in the room, but they're not gonna be they're not gonna be as cold as your refrigerator at home. So they will keep things kind of cool, but they're not gonna be as cold as your refrigerator at home. So I don't I don't know that I would like keep lunch meat in there for longer than a day or so. Um, but you can easily do breakfast in your room. You can carry snacks in with you to the parks, so granola bars, um nuts, um, fruit snacks, go-gurts, um, the little squeezable applesauce, you know, whatever you can carry into a soft-sided cooler, you can take into the parks. I've taken full meals in for my family. Um, so let's also consider eating our meals from only counter service restaurants. There are fabulous counter service restaurants. So when you think counter service, don't think just 
fast food. You know, it's not going to be just hot dogs, burgers, chicken tenders. You can have nice meals at counter service restaurants. Um, and so if you do two of, do, do eat your breakfast in your room, carry your snacks in, and do two counter service meals per day, and then maybe cap the end of your trip off with that one special table service meal. That's really going to cut down on your food costs. So if you use all of those tips, it will drop your family's food budget to $112 a day. Plus that, it'll run out, come out to about $180 for that table service meal. That is a much, much better prospect than $374. So let's average all of those numbers. Let's put it all together and, and what are we coming up with? So if we do a six night, seven day hotel stay with five days of park tickets, with one park per day at a moderate resort for a family of four, um, our average um, season is July, and so that comes out to $3,818.21. Now, let's say that we're flying in, and we're just gonna use the price of a round trip airline ticket from my hometown, and so the cost for that comes in just under $2,000. We're going to take Sunshine Flyer round trip from the airport at $127 and we are going to add in our food. And let's eat breakfast in our room. We're going to eat counter service for the remaining two meals. We're going to have two snacks a day. No, we're going to have one snack a day, but we're going to buy two of them and then split those two between four people. That's easily, easily done, um, especially if you're looking at like the Mickey pretzels, the Dole Whips, a lot of those are larger and easily shareable. And then at the very end of the trip, we're going to add in that character meal. And I love Tusker House. It's my favorite. It's probably not the best character meal on property, but I do love it. So we're just going to do that. Um, our food budget for our stay comes to $876. So let's add all those numbers together. And this trip total is going to come out at $6,821.21. That might be out of your price range. So you're going to want to look at other ways. Um, you're going to want to check out different, maybe airlines, different. Um, I can get much cheaper airfare if I'm willing to drive five hours to the airport. Cuts, it, it really drastically changes my airfare. Um, if I don't have that table service meal, if I don't eat that snack, if, um, like I said, I had one trip where we were staying off property, so we had breakfast um, before we left. We packed in um, actually our dinner. So we would eat breakfast before we left. We went to the parks. We would take a mid-afternoon break. I would have thrown lunch into a crock pot. Um, you know, we would eat lunch from the crock pot once we got back. And then then take like a, a kind of a, a snacky dinnery thing, pack that back into the parks with us. We went back to the parks about three or four in the afternoon. And so our food budget, it saved us a lot. So you can look at things like that. What I would highly recommend that you do is consult a travel advisor um, to assist you. They kind of know the ins and outs and they can help you figure out what is going to be the most cost effective um, trip for your family that still meets all of your family's wants, needs, and desires out of that trip. So when you're looking for a travel advisor, um, a lot of times people will hop on and they'll do Southwest Vacations or Expedia or, and that's fine, but you really want to find a travel advisor who, first of all, is a no-fee planning expert. So they're not going to charge you to plan your vacation and schedule those things and, and help you work out those details. Secondly, you want to find a travel advisor who works for an agency that is a Disney earmarked agency um, because that is going to get you the most knowledge and the most expertise. So I hope this video helped you. I'm going to cut it off here. My battery is about to die and I will see you again next week. Thank you for joining me.